Hello and welcome to a video about ENS or asymmetric numeral systems. This is a compression method where the encoded content is represented by a single integer number. So one of my friends told me about this algorithm and being interested in compression methods I checked some sources, the Wikipedia page and the original paper and had my impressions but just cannot grasp the actual method. A few years later I started to teach compression methods and so that ENS became a thing. It is now used at companies like Google or Facebook, even the Linux kernel is compressor is using ENS. This gave me enough motivation to build my own implementation of the algorithm and again it did not go well. I implemented some imitations of my information sources but my code just did not work generally. Finally, with some help of Yarek Duda, the original author of the method, and the webpage of Charles Bloom, I made my breakthrough and since I had some difficulties no one should have, I decided to create a YouTube video of the basics without any traps and oversimplifications. So there you have it, at least the first part. To explain how ENS works, let me use a symmetric case first. Here we have two symbols. And use an ordering of the possible words of the two kinds of symbols very similar to the binary numeral system. If we have only one kind of symbol, the numbering is even simpler. We just use the number to describe how many of the symbols the word contains, since the length of the word gives us all of the information we need about the word in this case. The concept of the unary numeral system is heavily related. If we have three symbols or four symbols, we can use the corresponding base numeral system for ordering. For example, in the case of three symbols, the number for the last possible word with three symbols is 39, which is 3 plus 9 plus 27, so 3 to the power of 1 plus 3 to the power of 2 plus 3 to the power of 3. This is a very natural ordering of the possible words. So this was the symmetric case. How does the asymmetric numeral system look like? In the asymmetric case, we can use different probabilities for symbols and change the ordering to make it follow more or less the order of the probabilities of the words. For example, if we use two-thirds chance for the symbol A, we can get this ordering. Please note that the actual ordering shown in this video is just one of the possible ways. Let's check how this ordering looks like for higher state numbers. As you can see, the words containing more A's tend to be longer for similar state numbers containing more B's. This means more probable words can be described with smaller numbers, and since smaller numbers can be described with less bits, well, it's compression. Okay, but how this ordering is built up, how we encode the symbols, and how we decode the state number into words. To understand this, let me get back to the symmetric case with only two equally probable symbols. Let's take a look at this part called the encoding table. For every state, these are the next states you can jump to choosing a symbol. In this case, all of the odd numbers are in this column and all of the even numbers are here. The underlying rule is fairly simple. To add the new symbol, calculate double of it add one or two depending your choice of symbol. Well, let's forget the underlying rule for a bit and just stick to the usage of the encoding table. So for a moment, let us just assume that we got an encoding table and check the asymmetric case again. Here you can see there is no simple row by row pattern, but anyway, let's start to encode with the table. We start from the empty word state code 0 and start to follow the table for the word AABA so we need to choose a state 1 for the first step and then state 3 then for a B we jump to 11 and from there we arrive to state 18. To decode the state number into a word we start to descend using the parent state for a given state. By jumping to the parent state, we can identify the symbol which was encoded last time, so we build up the content backwards. There are multiple ways to determine which is the last encoded symbol for a given state, so in practice we usually know the symbol before we jumping back. It is also worth to notice two things. First, 
The encoding table have all the numbers without repetition. And second, the values of the encoding table for the same state are approximating quite specific ratios. In any state, the value for the symbol A is around one and a half times the state value and three times that for symbol B. If I display the multiplicational inverse for the same numbers, you can discover the corresponding probabilities. Okay, so the last question in the scope of this episode is how the encoding table is generated. First, let me set something straight. Let's get back to state zero. If you check up some serious material on ENS, you will see a slightly modified version with an encoding table having values which are less by exactly one. Well, we cannot do this right now since that we would end up using state zero as an encoding step from state zero, which does not work. It would be ambiguous to decode. However, it is much simpler to do the calculations this way. So I need to confess that this very program I'm using right now is using an offset of one for the sake of this video. All right. So first, let us observe the probabilities. We use no floating point numbers now, we use rational numbers. And not just any kind of rational numbers, but having the same denominator for all of them. This is quite straightforward. If you build statistics about probabilities, you calculate occurrences and you can sum up all of the occurrences in a common denominator. This will be important because, however, it is not trivial on the first glimpse, this encoding table has some sort of periodicity. Let me highlight the first period. As you see, the first period contains the selected this many cells as the value of the denominator. This will be the first rule. You need to fill the encoding table for only the first that many elements, since the rest of the table will be just slightly modified iterations of the first period. Maybe it's a bit more visible if I use the denominator of 10. If I highlight the first period, the cell values between 1 and 10 show up. For the next period, the next 10 numbers, and so on. OK, second rule. In each column, have exactly that many highlighted cells as the symbol frequency in the statistics. The third rule is how to fill the cells. You need to use all numbers from 1 to the denominator, so do not omit any of them and never use the same number twice. These are the rules to build an encoding table that works in the sense that the encoding and the decoding process will be successful, but maybe there will be no compression. If you keep these three rules and use random number generator to fill the cells, you probably won't see compression. There are different filling strategies. I use the simplest one here, which already compresses quite nice, but there are slightly better methods as well. The simplest filling strategy I found on the page of Charles Bloom simply start to use the numbers for column to column if there is space for the next number. So in this example, you can see that here are the consecutive numbers in the first row since every symbol has at least one occurrence. And then only those cells are used to the following numbers where the column is highlighted. So it has space left. That's it. This is one of the ways of building a good encoding table. There are another filler methods. You can check the links in the description. As for decoding, you can maintain the parent state link by building the encoding table or use some clever arithmetic tricks to do that. So are we done? Well, not really. Now we have seen the basics, but if we want to use more characters to encode, we need to use a streaming kind of ENS, which can have some limit on the possible state values by emitting bits to the bitstream, so no integer overflow can ruin the encoding. This will have something to do with the second period of our encoding table. So that was the first part. I put links in the description for those who want to check out the streaming version without the next video. And you can download this interactive ENS educational program I wrote for this video and play with it. If you think that you can make a better video using this program, you are welcome to do that, as long as you refer this original. Thank you very much.